In the whirlwind realm of luxury watches, Rolex stands like a titan who refuses to check his own watch. The brand has perfected playing hard to get, keeping their productions just rare enough that everyone's left wanting just a bit more, a slick strategy that keeps their price tags floating in the stratosphere. However, the rumor mill suggests this high demand bubble might be gearing up to burst. As economic tides turn and consumer whims shift, even the stalwarts aren't bulletproof. Yet through it all, Rolex's commitment to top-notch quality and its timeless charm haven't missed a beat. So, is this downturn just a minor glitch in their grand design? Probably, after all, in the world of Rolex, a dip in fortunes is merely a casual Tuesday. For eons, rocking a Rolex has meant more than just keeping time. It's a flaunt of luxury and a nod to your success. But of late, whispers are floating around. Could the crown be losing its shine? Here at the opulent oasis, we're diving goggles on into the deep end of these rumors. We're dissecting the luxury watch arena's complex choreography, shifting consumer wins and Rolex's own clever plays. It's a heady mix and we're here to serve it straight. Are we witnessing the early signs of a royal stumble or is this merely the typical rise and fall seen through an overly zealous market magnifying glass? And remember, if you haven't already jumped on our channel bandwagon, hit that subscribe button to get a front row seat to all the intriguing tales we're spinning. It's the one place where time tells stories, not just seconds. Let's dive into a topic today that might make the Rolex enthusiasts among us do a double take. Sure, Rolex has a stellar reputation and a special spot in the hearts of watch aficionados, but there's a little more to the story that doesn't always get airtime. We're here to pull back the curtain on why Rolex might not be the rare gem we all thought. Here's the scoop. Rolex isn't playing hard to get. They're producing about 1.2 million watches each year. To put that in perspective, Tag Heuer is cranking out around 750,000, and yet people say tags are as common as coffee shops. Rolex produces nearly double. And then you look at the likes of Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet, who are making just a fraction of that number. Yet Rolex has woven this narrative of hard to find that we've all kind of swallowed, hook, line and sinker. Flashback to pre-pandemic times. Walking into a Rolex authorized dealer and picking up a watch was as easy as pie, sometimes even with a sweet discount on the side. So what flipped the script? Cue the travel ban, stimulus checks and a boom in luxury spending. This perfect storm, along with some crafty supply chain hiccups, sent prices for high-end tickers like Rolex through the roof. Enter the flippers, opportunists with an eye for profit who jumped on the bandwagon faster than you can say limited edition. As Rolex's star rose even higher, these market movers created a faux scarcity, tricking many into thinking these watches are as rare as a polite political debate. The reality? Rolex is pumping out watches faster than gossip spreads in a small town, yet here we are still buying into the myth of the elusive Rolex. Before we continue, why not join the opulent Oasis family? Subscribe for exclusive insights. Let's get back to it. Let's get into something that often leaves a sour taste at Rolex stores. The customer service can really test your patience. Imagine striding into a store, wallet ready for a hefty $10,000 splurge on a slick black submariner, only to feel like you're part of a Cold War spy exchange. You'd think you were trying to crack into Fort Knox rather than join some mythical waitlist. It's not exactly the welcome you'd expect when you're ready to drop serious cash. You're there as a serious buyer, not a window shopper. Yet sometimes it feels like you need to perform a secret handshake just to get a nod. Nobody should feel unwelcome when they're ready to invest in a passion, especially not true collectors who can spot a fake faster than a Rolex ticks. Now, about those designs, talk about Deja Vu. The Submariner and GMT Master II are so similar they could be in a witness protection program. And the Day Date, Date Just, and Sky Dweller? Let's just say if they were in a lineup, you'd have trouble telling them apart. They're classic, sure, but the excitement level, mild at best. It's reached a point where a new dial color sends us into a frenzy, like finding a new flavor of potato chip in a sea of salt and vinegar. When the biggest shakeup is what's behind the glass, Maybe it's time for Rolex to spin the design wheel a little harder. Sure, a Rolex shines with an impeccable finish. No one's denying that. But there's more to the story than just surface sparkle. You won't find an open case back to gawk at the inner workings. 
and knowing all the polishing is machine-driven might deflate your balloon a bit. Peek around the watch aisle and you'll notice brands like Omega, Breitling and Tag Heuer dishing out the same shiny quality, often flaunting their mechanics under transparent backs and not charging a small fortune for the privilege. Rolex, though, keeps it pretty vanilla. Even with pieces like the Sky Dweller, which between us has a dial busier than a coffee shop at rush hour and sports a price tag that makes your wallet weep, it's hard to tag it just a tool watch. It's pitched as luxury, but does it stack up? If what you're after is a true tool watch that delivers both in functionality and flair, consider a Hamilton, Sin, or Seiko, where the design speaks louder and the price whispers. And about that illustrious Rolex history, it's rich, all right, but it might be wearing a bit of a hero cape that's too large. They often get applause as the first to the dive watch, GMT and Automatic Movement Party, but a quick history check tells a cheeky tale. The real first automatic movement was whipped up by a Swiss guy named Harwood back in 1923. Blancpain had already dived deep with their 50 fathoms by 1953, and they had a wristwatch with a date function dancing around way back in 1926, years before Rolex rolled out the date just. And that first GMT accolade, Glycine was rocking that in 1953 too. So while Rolex's past is indeed packed with tales, it seems they were more fashionably late to the innovation party than the pioneering hosts they claim to be. There's a bit of Rolex fatigue setting in among the watch crowd, and it's not hard to see why. When you can't swing a lanyard at a watch show without hitting a Datejust, Submariner, or a Batman, it kind of takes the shine off the exclusivity, doesn't it? Step into any watch gathering, and you might bump into a small army of Paul Newman Daytonas, the darling of collectors. But let's be real, how rare is something if it's as common at these events as free pens at a conference? Many Rolex wearers these days aren't necessarily enthusiasts, they're just caught up in the brand's allure. At this stage, Rolex feels more like a blockbuster brand than a bastion of fine watchmaking. You're shelling out a premium, think double what you'd fork over for a Tudor, mostly to keep their execs in luxury and their ads on every billboard. While a little brand markup is standard, Rolex seems to have turned that knob all the way up to 11. For a lot, the real-life Rolex experience doesn't quite match the glamorous mythos they've spun. On the flip side, let's give credit where it's due. Rolex still rolls out the red carpet when it comes to quality and craftsmanship. Each piece is engineered with a precision that could give Swiss banks a run for their money. Their classics like the Submariner and Daytona aren't just watches, their legacies wrapped around your wrist, immune to the whims of fashion. Rolex isn't just sitting pretty on their heritage either. They're trailblazers in the horological hustle, from innovating self-winding tech to dabbling in new materials. This mix of tradition, tech savviness and undeniable quality has kept Rolex on its pedestal as a symbol of success and a savvy investment. Still, the lingering question, are we paying for true craftsmanship or just for the privilege of sporting that crown logo? Either way, it's clear Rolex knows how to keep the clock ticking in their favor. Rocking a Rolex is less about counting the seconds and more about savoring the status it brings. It's not merely a tool to tell time. It's a ticket to the High Rollers Club of watch wearers. Wearing one is like holding a golden key. It opens doors to a world where every tick tocks with a touch of opulence. In the universe of upscale watches, Rolex reigns supreme with designs that are as bold as they are precise, creating timepieces that don't just pass the time, but seem to slow it down in the most stylish way possible. What do you think about the allure of a Rolex? If this chat has piqued your interest, sound off in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed our dive into decadence, and don't forget to follow our channel for more Lux Talks. Thanks for hanging out with us at the Opulent Oasis. Stay tuned for more dazzling discussions in our upcoming videos.